The DF83 is finally here. The predecessor, the DF64, was probably the most hyped grinder of 2021, so a lot of people are going to be interested in this one here as well. I've only had the DF83 for a very short time, but due to this uh, overwhelming interest, I'll uh, share my thoughts on the grinder uh, a little bit earlier than I usually would. I know a lot of reviewers uh, already have and probably will talk more about the stock burst and the flavor profile of those. So in this video, I'll focus a little bit more on the upgrade options, which of course is also a big part of the appeal of the DF grinders. But first up, before we dive into the review, I should say that uh, this uh, unit here has been sent by uh, Me Coffee. So thanks to Luke from Me Coffee for supporting the channel. However, I should also say that this is not a sponsored video and nobody has seen the content or approved anything before releasing this video. So this is purely my own thoughts on this grinder. Okay, let's start out by talking about the first impression. So the first thing you notice when you receive the grinder is that the box looks a lot more professional than the previous version. It was basically just a gray cardboard box, uh, but there's a bit more branding going on with this one here. When you open it up, you'll also quickly see that uh, there's a lot more accessories included and the whole package just feels uh, a lot more polished. For example, there's a hopper included in the box, not something you need for a single dose grinder, but still nice to have. Let's say you want to season the burrs by running a few bags of bad coffee beans or rice through the grinder, then a hopper makes that a lot easier. There's also a brush, some extra rubber sleeves for the portafilter holder and a small RDT water spray bottle is also included. The most essential upgrades, however, is the dial adjustment indicator and the funnel that sits on top of the dosing cup, which reduces the mess. Both these accessories is something most people would end up buying online or 3D printing with the old model. So it's really nice to have this included in the package. The silicone bellows are of course also included. And uh, this time around, they have actually tried to uh, change the design slightly to uh, minimize popcorning by making the bellows a bit more narrow at the end. It's still not perfect, but it's uh, better than the DF64. Also, instead of the metal lid, you have this uh, wooden one here, which uh, makes the grinder look just a little bit more stylish. So when you combine all these things, it actually gives off a really good impression because those are some of the main uh, worries, some of the main complaints from uh, people, customers all over forums and online. But this is only the beginning. Let's look at some of the even more important upgrades over the original one. So the first really big thing you'll notice is that the finish uh, of the body is just a lot more premium than uh, this kind of uh, vinyl wrapper that uh, the old one used. So here you actually have real painting and it has this nice matte finish. Doesn't really attract fingerprints or anything like that. So uh, yeah, that in itself is a pretty big upgrade. Also that hideous little uh, coffee bean uh, dial indicator here has been removed. Uh, in fact, the whole chute and that front panel thing has been redesigned. It just looks a lot more sophisticated and mature here. So even if you're not using this funnel here, the distance between the catch cup and the chute is a little bit reduced on the DF83. A common complaint about the DF64 was also that the power button was kind of hidden under the catch cup, a pretty awkward position. And now it's been moved over here to the side, so it's a lot easier to reach. At the same time, they also have made a little bit of a slightly annoying decision, which is to uh, get the cord out here from the side instead of the back. It's not something huge, but uh, the back would have been better. From what I understand, they had to make this choice in order to keep the size of the body a little bit slimmer. But actually some of the most important differences are going on on the inside. So there's a new alignment system now. The DF64 used free springs to keep alignment, to keep this uh, thing here in place. Whereas the DF83 uses a spring washer instead. So to be honest, I'm still unsure which system is better at keeping alignment in the long run. But what I can already say now is that it's a lot easier to get this uh, top burr carrier back on after you disassemble the grinder. It simply screws in a lot easier. Uh, with the old version, you had to press it down while you were screwing. 
and uh, that could kind of uh, cause some problems with the uh, threading because you had to exert a little bit uh, too much force. Another big difference is the D clumper, the new one here, it just works uh, really well. The coffee comes out really focused, there's not any clumps going on and the static is greatly reduced. This is in contrast to the old version where actually it didn't do a good job at all. It, I think it tended to create more clumps than declumping and it meant that you had to use the bellows quite forcefully in order to get all the coffee out. This is not really an issue anymore at all. But let's grind some coffee and then we can get a better impression of uh, how the sound is, how much retention is there and uh, has the static problem been uh, reduced. Okay, I measured out a dose of 15.1 grams. So uh, I'm just gonna pour it in and then we're gonna grind it at around an AeroPress setting, I would say. And just check out how fast it is. So 15.2 grams, I didn't even use the bellows, there's no RDT going on. Um, let's see if there's anything extra coming out. 15.3, it looked like it was minimal. It would be interesting to see with an extra decimal. Let's try one more dose and see. Okay, second round. Got 15.6 grams, that's, let's just adjust it to the espresso setting. So this is here, around. I'm gonna use the funnel this time, just to be sure. And then just look again how fast it is. Fifteen point four. Let's just give it one more. Fifteen point five. So I believe we lost point one gram in retention, which is uh, pretty much acceptable in daily use. So far, from my experience, that's been the range: uh, zero point one, zero point two, uh, no retention at all. So I will say. In uh, that regard, it definitely lives up to my criteria for being a single retention grinder. So to sum it up, the externals, every single little detail I can think of is a big improvement compared to the uh, original version. The only slight thing is the cord coming out of the side and the popcorning, it could be a little bit better. But uh, besides that, I'm quite impressed at uh, how they've been able to address all these problems. Basically, I think the people behind this grinder have uh, almost killed an entire mini industry on Etsy dedicated to producing all these uh, upgrades and accessories. So that's not really something you would expect. A factory in China mostly producing OEM uh, private label products, but they've done it and uh, yeah, it's just a great job. Okay, now let's talk about the flavor. So this is the part of the review that is getting a little bit more tricky because uh, one of the main appeals of the original DF grinder was that uh, it was ideal to swap out burrs and then get something that was more suited for your uh, personal flavor. So for instance, you had the cast burrs if you were into uh, sweeter coffees, the multi-purpose burrs. Uh, for that clean modern taste and then you also had the high uniformity espresso burrs as well as many other 64 millimeter burrs. So I find it kind of hard to say anything in general about the taste of this grinder. With the DF64 you already have access to a wide range of suitable burrs, of course the ones just mentioned from SSP and at the moment of writing you only have an espresso burr set available from SSP in that size 83 millimeters. And that's a little bit of a shame because the MP burrs were perhaps the most popular of all the burrs designed for the DF64. Masser has also produced a range of burrs that fits the DF83. However, in practice, it's almost impossible to locate most versions online, except one of the filter burr sets. I managed to get my hands on the filter burr set called 151F, 
So almost immediately after I got the DF83, I installed the Mesa Burst. So while the cups are okay, and the grinder actually performs pretty well in sifting tests. It's certainly better than something like the Easy Press OK Max or even the new hyped uh, ZP6, uh, also from Easy Presso. It didn't quite live up to the expectations I had coming from the SSP uh, burr set and from uh, other good grinders uh, I have at home. The, the mass of filter burrs don't really have that same X factor that you get from the SSP uh, multi purpose burrs. And at the same time, they uh, don't really work for Espresso. So initially, I thought they might work for Espresso because when you look at the geometry, it looks like a more Espresso-focused burr. But in reality, a turbo shot is probably uh, the most I can get out of it. So you can definitely not uh, choke uh, a nine bar Espresso machine with uh, these burrs here. At least uh, I haven't been able to it with uh, this grinder. So I will say if I had to choose between the 83mm Mesa filter burst and 64mm SSP multi-purpose burst, then I'll choose the SSP ones. And I think the same would also go for the stock burst. The multi-purpose burst are simply just uh, way more interesting. The SSPs are so iconic among coffee geeks because they offer something special to both espresso shots and brewed coffee that you don't get with other types of coffee. So even though I don't prefer them every single time for all coffees, I just love to have them in my collection. Speaking about burrs, let's just have a little look at the different types. So these ones here are the 64mm Etzel Mill burrs used in the DF64. Then here in comparison, uh, there's a 58mm burr set, uh, also produced by Etzel Mill, I believe. And then here we have the 83mm stock burrs from the DF83. So you can see going up from uh, something like 58 millimeters to uh, 64 millimeters, that's not a huge jump, but then going up to 83 millimeters, it's kind of a different ball game here with these burrs. One shouldn't make too many judgments about the uh, flavor profiles just by the visual look of a burr. But uh, if you look at the original DF64s here, they seem to have a little bit more of that uh, classic Italian espresso geometry compared to the new ones. So for comparison, uh, you can take a look at the oat. These are the original oat brew burrs. And I feel like they actually have a little bit more in common with the DF83 millimeter burrs. Don't get me wrong, the DF83 millimeter burrs are definitely still uh, very suitable for espresso. It's just interesting to note that uh, difference. Okay, but to wrap this one up, I think I will say that the DF83 is just so much better than the DF64. Looks, design, user experience, speed, almost in every single category, I think it's a, a huge improvement. The main downside is the price. The DF83 is 700 US dollars, and for that price, you can buy a DF64 and install the SSP multi-purpose burst. And that will give you a better cup for both espresso and drip coffee. So it's kind of hard to say that this is just a must buy. On the other hand, it's just a really easy grinder to recommend if you want an espresso focused single dose grinder that does everything pretty well. The DF83 just works really well out of the box. You don't need any 3D printing, you don't need any mods or any upgrades. It's just an excellent grinder. And like the original DF64, it works really well as a multi-purpose grinder. So you can use it for both espresso and drip, AeroPress, everything in between. Uh, so you don't need an additional grinder for that. So I actually think as a so-called uh, niche zero killer, this grinder has uh, everything it takes. And I believe it's also gonna retail at around the same price in most places uh, around the world, perhaps uh, excluding uh, the UK. So compared to the niche with this one, you get an espresso focus grinder uh, that you will be able to upgrade to something more modern, perhaps in a half year to a year when uh, SSP releases the new burrs. But if you add the massive filter burrs like I have, then you just have a pretty expensive brew grinder and uh, you can get better results for less money elsewhere. By the way, I just mentioned modern coffee. So if you're curious what I mean about that, then I have a video about uh, specialty coffee. I'll put it right here and then you can just click it and then I'll see you over in that video.